So hi everyone, this is Woman Blockchain, Justina welcoming you in DC and I'm here with a very special guest who's been in the blockchain space, who has organized hackathons and I'll let her introduce herself. It's a pleasure, thank you so much. My name is Dr. Janice Farrar Samani and I am the CEO of FSG Digital Transformation Company as well as we have a nonprofit because we believe in giving back and that is Fifth Wave STEAM Education Initiative. Wow, Janice, so thanks so much for being here with me today. You do so much work in this space. I'm very honored to be here with you. And the reason we're having this interview today in the first place is to discuss blockchain and financial literacy. And you mentioned you have already worked on that, so I'd love to get your input. Well, I find it to be really critical. Financial literacy, I believe, is at the forefront as well as the foundation of economics. So in order for people to be successful and to move forward to build individually as well as communities, cultures, as society, if you will, and whether it's governments or whether it's more personal, you need to have an understanding of finance. And in order to do that, I just said, well, why not have a hackathon? Why not open it up to the world, open it up to generations, if you will, so it wasn't any particular age. And we got together in a hackathon format. We had a pre-talk to understand exactly what financial literacy was. But most importantly, I connected it to something that was critical in the Maslow's Law, which is food. If you don't understand where your next meal is coming from or why there isn't a grocery store in your neighborhood, this gave, this gave us an opportunity to open up that thought process about how to connect food with financial literacy and the value that it brings to the individual and to society. So we had a hackathon in 2021 excuse me, 2022, and uh, it, was, it was fantastic because it was open to the global community and we focused on allowing for people to uh, come into that space with no coding. So it didn't matter at what level they came in and we would had our orientation so they could understand. We provided a platform in which they could actually come on and have mentors, connect, build a community and an ecosystem. And then at the end of it, it was also translated in French as well as we had English. And uh, so that opened up and level set in many instances just the opportunity and the access, if you will, to that experience of innovation. And the team that won, I have to tell you, the team that won was a middle school team. We had college students, we had professionals. It was incredible. But a middle school team won from South Africa. And they actually created a, I, what I would call is a full 360 supply chain solution for food insecurity in South Africa. Wow, you know, that's actually what I want to do my master's in. <laughs> Fantastic. Supply chain and security. Yes. And AI. Yes. Oh, fascinating. Absolutely. But that aside for the moment. <laughs> um, what I wanted to ask you next is, I understand you went into Maslow. I understand you made it inclusive. I even feel like you broke down barriers by doing it and, you know, level setting it in different languages. How do you feel the gaming aspect of money will affect the financial literacy as well? Well, I think it's fun. I mean, it, it gets you involved and it also spars on competition. Um, it gets, gives you a sense of, if I do more, what else can I bring to the table? And it gives you an opportunity to actually accelerate and to push oneself. So sometimes we can compete against others, but it also allows us to compete with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Can I learn more? Can I do more? Can I be more? And what exactly, what value does that bring? So I think it would be quite intriguing with the ladder board or something of that nature. Yeah, so we're actually building that out into our websites, having the leaderboard to leader put like the uh, the uh, the gamification and then yes. showing who's doing well and how you know how people are playing so that's for sure the the data aspect like you said is interesting because it gets the competition going I want to know how um, how you get the people engaged when you do these hackathons to ensure that the learning is immersive 
Oh, good question. Really? And it's not difficult. It's a matter of, uh, I, I, someone began to share how we went through the process of the hackathon. And I believe that that truly was the, the secret sauce. So I'm kind of sharing just a little bit with you is that we had an orientation whereby we were actually able to bring in individuals into a very secure space that they could learn and hear from people from around the world that look like them or didn't look like them, that sound like them but may not have sound like them. So we had someone from Europe that is a dear colleague and on our advisory board that actually provides a mindset shifting exercise and spoke about how we need to think differently and if we think differently, how we can utilize our different thoughts. So that was a great opportunity. We also brought in someone that focused on a PhD student that focused on agriculture because I truly found I felt that part of the food security and the literacy and the understanding the value of food in an economic sense was because we need to think about food to table what does it mean from a seed to the actual harvest and from the harvest to the actual uh, farmer and from the farmer to market so we brought in a, a, an actual PhD student that was studying some of that area. And then I put on, I layered it into the blockchain space, which gave it that whole supply chain concept. And then we brought in an expert from IBM that also worked on the chain for many, many years, a dear colleague of mine. And so that was a great uh, setting the stage, if you will, and got people interested. Wow, I could really see how this could happen. And you don't have to have coding it, or a low code even. So it was a great experience. And then the next day, we actually had our uh, full session. I taught a class in blockchain, which I've been teaching for five years. So it was a great opportunity for people to understand what exactly was blockchain, and then providing case studies so they could see themselves and see their businesses or businesses that they utilize or frequent. They could understand those concepts and to put into perspective exactly, hmm, well, how can I change this to really begin to think about if I'm going to buy a car, because the, a car, the automotive industry was one case study, if I'm going to buy a car, what is the value of that car? How does that uh, literacy, that financial literacy about the value of the car and how we utilize the chain and our finances? What They were pulling everything together. So it was a lot of cognitive development. It was a lot of thinking. It was a lot of personal desire and interest in exactly what they wanted to buy. Excellent. It sounds very immersive and I also like how you allowed people from different levels of coding to participate. Um, have you ever thought about AI in your workshops? Oh, absolutely. Because after digital transformation, AI is at the cornerstone. AI, ML, machine learning, deeper learning. Um, Absolutely. AI allows for us to think on a different level. It allows to upscale and in some contexts you, you may have, if you want to separate the machine learning aspect, the repetitive, the what ifs, that allows for us to think in a different context. So um, we could look at that virtual space, the AI space, and take it out of the here and now and into a full contextual maybe three web, web three um, context context and so who knows what could come from it we haven't done it yet I know you're on the parapet of doing it I want to be a part of it because I think it's going to be exciting if we could really bring in that AI world where people could be them their full selves in that space then they can actually create without biases they can create without hesitation, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the unpeeling, you know, to really happen, and, and I believe very truly that in Web3, we can really level set that way. Yeah, I like what you said earlier about creating the safe space in the first place, right? Yes. So I think, like, going back to what you said and the needs, one of the first needs is also shelter, right? Yes. So I think setting the stage for that idea to come in, if someone is in that um, safe space, they can get creative. 
Absolutely. Right? So that Absolutely. leads to the creativity, the flow of ideas. So it seems like, and it's interesting how what you said earlier too, when you set up that someone coming in to do that mental shift, that when you can shift a room like that, that means all those people um, can completely, you know, you'll get a whole different level of ideas you may not have predicted before. Absolutely. And quite often people are individuals, you, I, are always thinking in within a certain parameter. That's how we're trained. That's how we're, you know, we, we learned. But to think outside of the box is to allow yourself to be or to take form however you'd like to take that form. So if you could imagine in an AI space actually having a persona or avatar that looks like you but may not look like you directly and they could actually take on that, that persona that brings them uh, to another level, another way of thinking to say, well, it's, it's me and I, you don't have as much hesitation about making those decisions or innovation developing mm -hmm. a particular product, idea, concept, and really putting it out there because the judgment is gone. And do you think that also, going back to financial literacy, being in that space aids people like change their concepts of financial literacy? Maybe like when they've gone in, they had one concept and they can walk out and they can completely see things differently. Absolutely. I think there's a value shift. There's a value shift. It allows when you put your um, ideas and concepts into real thought without judgment, quite often we can begin to say, well, you know, perhaps that idea would work, mm. right? And it doesn't um, make you apprehensive from trying. And that's the beauty, is that you could try in these spaces, you could try in these dynamics without judgment, and innovation actually does occur. I love it. I love it. Thanks for what you're doing. Uh, such a pleasure to have you here today, and I look forward to further collaborating with you. Me too. I love it. Thank you. Thank you.